ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد verily all praises are due to allah we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from the evil of our own souls and from our evil deeds whom sabba allah guides can never be led astray and whom sabba allah allows to stray can never be guided i bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except allah the one having no partner and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his slave and his messenger اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون او يو هو بليف هاف تقوى بالله يو شود هاف تقوى بالله ان داي نوت اكسبت ان ستيت اوف اسلام يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما او يو هو بليف هاف تقوى بالله سبيك ا ستريت فورورد وورد هي ويل فورغيف يور سينز اند ريبير يور ديز اند ايفر تيكس الله ان هيز ميسنجر از ا جاي هاز اوريدي اتشيفد ذا مايتيست اتشيفمنت ماي دير ريسبكتد براذرز اند سيسترز ان اسلام وي شود بي اوير اوف اور هيريتاج از مسلمز and by that i mean our calendar our history what's taking place around us not just from our perspective as living as uk citizens but as muslims in our place in history and that means that we will be aware inshallah that we are in the month of rabi'ul awwal and there will be many many muslims during this month celebrating the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam I have zero interest from this member to discuss whether you should or shouldn't celebrate the Maulid. Zero interest. I literally couldn't care less because it's not fard either way. It is not fard to celebrate nor is it fard not to celebrate. Instead I'm going to talk today about what is fard upon you and I. What is fard upon you and I when it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Leave the debates for other people. but what is far than there is no debate on this is to love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than anything that's far people will argue what they want about the issues they want they let them do it no one will argue is it far to love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam every single scholar of ahl sunnah wal jamaa every single scholar will agree it is far obligatory that every muslim loves rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam So that's what I want to begin focusing on today is our love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam not how you show that love uh, in celebrations or other than that. Let me prove to you how important it is to love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And let us remind ourselves as we are mentioning him sallallahu alaihi wasallam every time we give him salaam nabi our salawat have been taken from our lips to Medina and brought back to us. So let us be proud to mention sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let me prove to you how important it is. In a hadith found in Bukhari and Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said roughly translated, this is so important. None of you will enter paradise until stop there. None of you will enter paradise until the moment you hear that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us none of you will enter paradise. He didn't say all of you, he said none of you will enter until. So there's a caveat. So this means we need to pay very close attention. If none of you are going to enter paradise until I need to know what the until is. Because that until is so important because if I don't get the until right, I'm not going to enter paradise. Let's go back to the hadith again. None of you will enter paradise until. Until what? Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam until I am more beloved to you than your father and your children and all of mankind subhanallah the ulama the muhaddithin have said when he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said then your father it means your tribe your nationality and all of these things your groups your sects 
When he says your child, it means it not only your children, it signifies your wealth and your properties and all those things of the dunya that you love. And when he says all of mankind, it means everything else. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us, none of you is going to enter paradise until he, alayhi salatu wasalam, is more beloved to us than everything else in our lives. So we ask ourselves a question today. Again, I said I'm not interested in debates on celebrating, not celebrating. Leave them. I'm interested in me and you answering one question. How much do we love Rasulullah <laughs> How much do we love him? Some people might ask the question, why should we love Rasulullah Well, there's the answer because he وسلم, is telling us that it is so important that we're going to enter paradise, not going to enter paradise unless we love him. But I want to flip that question around. Instead of saying, why should we love Rasulullah sallam, let me turn it around and say this. How can we not love Rasulullah sallam? How can we not love him? When you look at him, when you look at what he did, when you look at his character, how can you not love Rasulullah sallam? Think about the people you love and admire the most. Does anyone love people who have a bad character? Does anyone say, oh, I love this person, he's a liar and a cheat and a horrible person? You don't. You might tolerate them. You might respect them because you have to, because they're a president of a country called the USA or something like that. You might be afraid or something, so you, so you have this tolerance. But no one loves these people. Rasulullah Wasallam's character was not just testified by the companions, which we will see in a moment. Rasulullah Wasallam's character was testified to by Allah. Allah says in the Quran that he was upon khuluq al azim the noblest, the highest, the most majestic, the best of characters was who? The best of creation, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And we know this. I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again, again because we need to remind ourselves of his character for our love. We think about hundreds of incidents Hundreds of them we could use, but let's just pull out one or two that we are all familiar with to remind us of his character. We all know the story, and I'm just going to very quickly summarize because we all know it so well. When the Bedouin man came into Masjid the Nabi and urinated in the mosque, and the Sahaba were angry and they wanted to attack him and they wanted to beat him, and the Rasulullah said, Leave it, leave him, leave him, let him finish what he's doing. He let him finish what he's doing. When he finished what he's doing, he called for the Sahaba to take some buckets of water to wash away the urine. And he said, bring him to me in the best of manners. Bring him to me in the best of manners. And then very beautifully advised him that these are the houses of Allah and that they are made for the remembrance of Allah. It is not befitting that we do things like this in them. You tell me right now, right now, if somebody walked in from there, from that back door and peed on our masala, which of us would have that character to just let them finish so it doesn't cause them discomfort, quietly get it washed away and say very beautifully, would we do this? I can look around the room and see a few people whose fists would be flying and tempers would be flaring. But Allah says he's upon khuluq al adheem and this is one incident we could give hundreds, hundreds of incidences from the life of Rasulullah Wasallam, which will tell us about his character. I point this out because we need to know why it's important to love him. We've seen that. We need to know the character that makes us love him. And the only way you're really going to know his character, the only way you're really going to know his character is by studying his life, by understanding who he was. If you don't know who he was, if you don't know the seerah, if you don't know what he did, if you don't know what his character was, yes, we will still say we love him and we say it from the tongue, but you develop real love when you get to know someone. And the best way to know Rasulullah is by studying his life. And every page of seerah or every YouTube of seerah or every CD or whatever it is you listen to, podcast of seerah that you hear or read, you will be amazed. Genuinely amazed, because every single page you will see that ayah resounding, resounding and resounding that Allah says He is upon khuluq al azim Because the seerah is nothing but a liturgy of what? Khuluq al azim Throughout the pages and the moments that you will hear. 
And the people who saw it and witnessed it were the people who loved him the most. The companions of Rasulullah, their love, their love was much greater than ours because they witnessed it. They witnessed him. They saw his character. We know that when they were asked about his character, Aisha said, his character is the Quran. He was the living embodiment of the Quran. Allah tells us he is Rahmatilalameen, a mercy for all the worlds. They saw it, they lived it, they felt it. They didn't just believe in abstract, they felt it and lived it in real. It was tangible. Every day of their lives they were witnessing it. How their love grew and grew because of this, only we can begin to imagine. And we see that their love was so much. The love was so much. And now let's go back to that hadith that Rasulullah mentioned. Let me mention it one more time and then let's put it in context. Their love was so much. As the Prophet said, none of you will enter paradise until I become more beloved to you than your father and your child and all of mankind, meaning the most beloved to you. When Zayd was being tortured, when Zayd was being lashed, when Zayd was being whipped, when Zayd was being brutalized by the Quraysh, they asked him laughing as the blood was dripping from him, do you wish Muhammad was in your place now? Because they're beating him. They're making his back bleed. They're whipping him. They're torturing him. Do you wish that Muhammad was in your place? Now they thought we've got him. Because we're torturing you so much. He said, by Allah, I would not want even one prick of a thorn harms to come to him. I would choose it for myself. And it's easy to say in words. It's very easy to say in words. We would all say that. Yeah, I'll put my life down for the Prophet Really? Really? You can't pray Fajr on time, but you'll put your life down for the Prophet and here is Zayd literally saying, I will put my life down for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We can't uphold the most basic of sunnah and yet we claim to love him. We can't do the simplest of things that he loved and yet we claim to love him. We will happily have a celebration and a party and whatever it may be and we claim to love him. And we'll see the, the lights coming up and all those things and, and the dancing and all those things that we say, these are signs of our love. And yet when it came to Qiyamul Layl, which he never missed in his entire life, Ah, oh, that's a bit hard because it's not so much fun as the party you're going to throw once a year and say that you love him. So my point is, if we truly love Rasulullah wasallam, we would love him the way those who loved him the most loved him. And the way they loved him was to follow him and obey him. The way they loved him, actually let me step back from the way they loved him. We can say, of course, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq loved him, Umar al-Khattab loved him, all of the Sahaba loved him. Let me prove how much creation loves Rasulullah wasallam. Before the member in Medina was built, Rasulullah wasallam used to give the khutbah from a tree stump. From a tree stump. And there is a pillar still there in Medina where the tree stump was. When the tree stump was superseded by the member that they built for the Prophet to start giving khutbah, Hadith in Bukhari, by the way. So if anyone wants to go and say, oh, are you making it up? Go and check. Hadith in Bukhari. The Sahaba and the Prophet heard the tree stump crying. They heard the tree stump crying. Why? Because until that day, Rasulullah would give the khutbah from the tree stump. Now the tree stump is no longer going to have the Prophet give the khutbah from him. So he began to cry. Rasulullah hugged the tree stump and he said in one narration had I not hugged the tree stump and comforted it it would have continued to cry until the day of judgment this is a tree stump this is not a Muslim who claims to be part of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam part of the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is a tree stump and the tree stump cried from his love and his missing of Rasulullah sallallahu now let's put in perspective our love. And I want everyone to ask themselves the question. Not point the fingers at anyone else. I ask myself, do I love the Prophet Wasallam more than the tree stump? Do I shed tears at the thought of him? Do I shed tears wishing to be with him? Do I shed tears when he's insulted? Do I shed tears? All of these questions I ask myself. Not in comparison to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. I'm going to compare myself to a tree stump. And see where I sit then. How many of us would love to see Rasulullah in our dreams? Amazing. 
Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, Rasulullah said that if you've seen me, he who's seen me in his dreams has truly seen me. Anas ibn Malik used to have visions, ru'ya, of Rasulullah every other night. Can you imagine? Imagine every other night you go to sleep and you see in your dreams. And remember the hadith says, he who's seen me in his dreams has truly seen me. Every other night he would see him in his dreams. And on the nights that he didn't see him in his dreams, he would cry to Allah, Ya Rabbi, please give me a revision of my Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We see him once in our lifetime and it's the biggest thing we've ever seen. He's seeing him every other night and it's not enough. Because like the tree stump, his love was far greater than we can imagine. How do we show love? How do we genuinely <coughs> so show love for Rasulullah sallallahu First and foremost, let's go to the Qur'an. Allah says in the Qur'an, which we all know, indeed Allah and the angels send their salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So, O you who believe, send your peace and blessings upon him. Allah is telling us that Allah and the malaika send salat and nabi. So, O you who believe, do the same. And as I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the khutbah, just saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi salatu wasalam, durood, whatever you want to do, any connotation of salah and nabi, your salawat is being taken from your lips by an angel, taken to Medina to the grave of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah gives back his ruh and he responds. And that angel brings his response back to you and I. So no matter where you are, no matter which city, city you're in, which place on the earth you're in, whether you're under the sea, whether you're in the sky, wherever you are, you make salah and nabi, the angels are bringing those salawat back and forth to you. This is one of the ways we will start to develop love for Rasulullah because we're making dua for one another. Another way of showing our love, that tree was missing him and it cried. We would start to miss him too if we knew him properly. And not in an abstract way, but knew him, read the seerah, loved it, fell in love with him on a daily basis and wanted to meet him. The tree had an eagerness to meet him, to be with him. That's why it cried. How much are we eager to have that moment, inshallah, when we drink from his hand at al -Qawf? How much? If we don't have it, think about it and make sure we start developing it. But the most important way to show love, we should follow him. We should love what he loved and hate what he hated. We should love to follow him because the ultimate show of love is emulation. Emulation. People love their football team so they wear the shirt of the football team. People love the pop star so they wear the hairstyle if you have hair of the pop singer. People love whatever they love and they emulate what they, em what they love. We should want to emulate. And remember, Allah said, He is upon khuluq al azim And He, sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ad-deen mu'amalat. Our deen is mu'amalat, interaction, social interaction. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, as well, I have not been sent except to perfect good character. <clears throat> so our shirt that we wear shouldn't just be a shirt that says, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it shouldn't just be external manifestations of sunnah. We should love to develop the character of Rasulullah We should follow him. We should want to be like him. We should long to yearn to see him. And I will conclude the first khutbah with two beautiful bits of advice about if we do love him. What is the consequence of loving him? Of course, we began the khutbah saying none of us will enter paradise. None of us will enter paradise unless he's the most beloved to us. Now listen to these two hadith, both in Sahih Muslim. Rasulullah said, roughly translated, from the ones who love me the most, listen, from the ones who love me the most, will be a people who will come after me, and they will wish that they could sacrifice their family and all their wealth just to see me once. From the ones who love me the most, will be a people who come after me. That's us, we're coming after him. And they will be willing to sacrifice their family and their wealth just to see me once. Another hadith. There will come a people after me who will be my Khalil in Jannah, my best friends in paradise. The Sahaba said, are we not your Khalil? And Rasulullah said, you are my companions. Rather, my Khalil will be a people who will come after me and they will love me and they will believe in me, even though they've never seen me. We have those possibilities to be amongst the Khalil of Rasulullah because we have come after him 
and inshallah we can love him and we can believe in him even though we've never seen him aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alladhim li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu huwal ghafurur rahim الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على اشرف المرسلين ختم الانبياء ورحمه للعالمين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد واله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد so now we've seen about how important it is and how we should love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now i want to bring our attention to something else As I mentioned at the outset, many people will be celebrating the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi and I'm not interested in debating the pros and the cons and the rights and the wrongs of it. I told you it's fard to love Rasulullah sallallahu and that's what we're focusing on. But there is another event that took place some say on the same day, the scholars have differed, but definitely within the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, which is the greatest calamity to befall this ummah. the greatest calamity to befall the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also took place in the same month and that is the death of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now i'm going to begin with something that he gave us as something which i think is an amazing gift he left for us he said roughly translated sallallahu alaihi wasallam if one of you is afflicted with a calamity if one of you is afflicted with a calamity let's pause I reckon every single one of us in this room is afflicted with some calamity. How do I reckon this? Because Allah tells us in the Quran that do you think you say you will believe and you will not be tested as those were tested before you. So we've all come to Juma therefore we all say we believe. Which necessitates we will be tested. So that test is our personal calamity. So let's go back to our hadith. If one of you is afflicted with a calamity, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that's us. We say we believe therefore we're being tested these are our calamities if one of you is afflicted with a calamity <coughs> let him remember my death for indeed it is the greatest of all calamities let him remember my death for indeed it is the greatest of all calamities hadith found in ibn majah the death of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the greatest calamity to befall the ummah ever not my words but the words of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so just for the few short minutes remain remaining just to help us with our own calamities let us remind ourselves having seen about how much we should love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam let us remind ourselves of the incident of the death and if i go over time i'm not going to apologize today because this is the greatest calamity that has befallen our ummah the death of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam aisha radhiyallahu anha narrates that when the prophet sallam was suffering from his death sickness the adhan was made he said command abu bakr to lead the salah and aisha radhiyallahu anha some of the others said oh messenger of allah abu bakr is too soft hearted he won't be able to do it in your absence he said again command abu bakr to lead the salah they said again they tried to convince him not to do it. i'm paraphrasing they convinced him not to do it choose somebody else he said again the third time command abu bakr to lead the salah again they went back against his wishes and he said you people are like the women at the time of uh, uh, um, uh, at the time of um, yaqub alayhi salam with yusuf alayhi salam at the time of yusuf alayhi salam you like the rebellious women then they understood and they said okay and abu bakr led the salah and rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam saw him lead in the salah and suddenly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam felt a little bit better so he went to join rasul sallam uh, abu bakr siddiq leading the salah he wasn't strong enough so he sat next to him and abu bakr continued with that salah aisha radhiyallahu anha continued she said when i was watching him it's as if i'm looking at his feet dragging on the floor from the pain he was in at that moment just think for a moment he's meant to be the most beloved of everything that we love what pain was he going through that his beloved wife is seeing him and his feet are dragging on the floor because he's getting carried on the arms of two people and he's in so much pain 
that his feet are dragging on the floor and she couldn't bear to see him in that much pain. She said, I saw him in so much pain with his feet dragging on the floor and I saw him go to the position of Abu Bakr Sadiq and the, the, he continued to lead the Salah. That pain that he was in, in other narrations, Rasulullah described it as the pain of the whole of humanity put together. The pain we suffer is commensurate to our status. The most beloved of Allah's creation was Rasulullah So the pain that he suffered on his death was more pain than all of us could imagine suffering on our deathbeds. If we love him, imagine what he was going through with that pain. She continues. Anas ibn Malik narrates during the death sickness. He said, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet did not come out of his house for three days. After three days when the next prayer was due, Abu Bakr came forth to leave the Salah as previously. At that moment, Rasulullah opened the curtain and he looked out at the rows that were, 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 were lining up for the Salah. And his face illuminated with a smile. And Anas ibn Malik said, we have never seen anything more beautiful than we saw the face of Rasulullah that day, having not seen him for three days, as he looks upon his ummah about to stand in Salah. Abu Bakr looked around and saw him and was about to retreat from the position. The Prophet signaled to him to carry on. He closed the curtain and he was never seen alive by any of the companions except those in his chambers ever again. It was the last time he was seen in public and the thing he saw his ummah doing was standing ready for salah. That was the last time they saw his beautiful face, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, alive. In the final moments of his life, Aisha radiallahu was reading the Mawdithain, the Surah Falak and Surah Nas, and blowing on his own blessed hands and wiping on him. He was too weak to even do it himself. Remember the pain I just mentioned. He was suffering from a raging fever. She would blow Falak and Nas on his hands and use his own hands to wipe on his own blessed body. At that moment, she <coughs> noticed that as... as uh, one of the uh, younger companions came in, he was carrying a, a uh, maswak. And she noticed that his eyes went towards the maswak, so she commanded for it. And she took the maswak and she wet it, and she chewed it, and she gave it to him to clean his teeth. And something, subhanAllah, else happens here. Fatima radiallahu comes into the room and sees her father in this situation. Imagine your daughter seeing you in pain. She, radiallahu says, what extreme pain is my father suffering and began to cry. What extreme pain is my father suffering and she began to cry. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa at that moment, your father will never suffer pain again after this. Allahu Akbar. Your father will never suffer pain again after this. Anas ibn Malik relates that the predominant matter that the Prophet kept stressing as he was in this pain was to guard the Salah, guard the Salah, guard the Salah. He kept repeating it over and over and over until he was no longer able to speak. Imagine how important this issue of the Salah is, that on his deathbed, in this pain, the one thing he keeps repeating is about the Salah, until he was no longer able to speak. He then kept slipping in and out of consciousness. He was lying on the lap of Aisha radiallahu anha. She was so uh, blessed to have the Messenger of Allah, not just as a husband, but to pass away on her lap. Imagine the honor that Allah gave her, bestowed her, that the greatest of creation dies and leaves his dunya while being asleep on her lap. She was wiping him with a cloth to try and bring the fever down and lower the pain that he was suffering. And then suddenly he said, in the midst of that pain, having said as salah as salah as salah over and over and over and coming in and out of consciousness, he says, La ilaha illallah. And then he said, Indeed, death contains agony. Rasulullah is saying, Indeed, death contains agony. What was he going through? The Prophet has never complained about anything his entire life. You will not find a hadith of complaint where he mentions pain. Oh, he was injured, he didn't mention pain. Nothing of his life, he mentioned pain. Suddenly now he says, verily death contains agony. He then pointed up towards the sky and said, let me join the highest companions. Let me join the highest companions. And then his hand dropped. And at that moment, 
Rasulullah left this dunya. If he is more beloved to us than anything else, we would feel right now the pain that the companions were feeling at the time. So much pain were the companions feeling at the time that when the news started to break, Umar al-Khattab, the mighty Umar, the second Khalifa after Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the one who the Prophet said, if another Prophet were to come after me, it would have been Umar. He broke down. So broken was he, he drew his sword. And he says, I hear you people saying that the Muhammad وسلم, is dead. You are all hypocrites if you say this. And he drew his sword. And he says, verily, just as Moses went to Allah to receive the tablets for 40 days, so too has the Prophet gone to Allah and he will return to us. Anyone who says different, I will remove their arms and their legs by this hand. Panic ensued. Chaos ensued. Because they really, truly loved Rasulullah more than they loved themselves. And in this panic, Umar has his sword out, companions are crying, the family are crying, all of this is going on. It took one man to rise above the rest. And who is that? His best friend, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. His best friend, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, the one he loved most from all of the companions, the one who we could argue loved him the most from all of the companions, came from his house, he had uh, one of his families lived on the outskirts of Medina, he came from that house having heard the news, and he sees the panic ensuing, he sees Umar with his sword out, he sees everybody going crazy, and he goes past it, and he enters the chamber of his daughter Aisha anha, and his best friend Rasulullah and by then they've covered him with a cloth, and he lifts the cloth from the face of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you are pure and blessed in death as you are in life. O oh, Messenger of Allah, you are as pure and blessed in death as you are in life. And then he gently kissed him on the forehead and he recovered his face. Can you picture that scene? Can you imagine what it must have felt like? What you're feeling right now? Imagine what Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and all of those companions were feeling to see it live. Not hear it from some person in another country. See it live and feel it live. He then left the scene and he goes out to the melee that's taking place and Umar is brandishing his sword and he asks Umar to be quiet and Umar is still brandishing his sword and he begins to speak. And when Abu Bakr spoke, everybody listened. And he said, radiallahu anhu, he said, whoever worships Allah, whoever worships Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa know that Muhammad has died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But whoever worships Allah, know that he is al-hayy, the ever-living, the immortal. And then he recited the verse, the translation of which is, Muhammad is no more than a messenger. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. If he was died or slain, will you then turn back on your heels? If any did turn back on his heels, let, them, let not the least harm will it do to Allah. But Allah, on the other hand, will swiftly reward those who serve him with gratitude. Upon hearing that verse, the mighty Omar said when he narrated it afterwards, it's as though I never knew that verse existed. Umar knows the Qur'an off by heart. He said, it's as though I never knew that verse existed. And his legs went weak underneath him and he fell to his knees. And everybody then realized Rasulullah has died. I bring that to us for a reason. If we are meant to love Rasulullah more than anything else, and if he is saying to us, whenever we are afflicted by calamity, remember his death. We know that story, all of us, very well. Whenever difficult times come to us, whenever difficulty comes to us, which I'm sure everyone is having some difficulties in their lives right now, remember that moment. Picture every one of those scenes. The maswak, the pain, the agony, <coughs> Abu Bakr, Omar, and all of those scenes taking place. Because that was the greatest calamity, much more than anything we will be facing. And in this month of Rabi Allah, let us not just look at parties and fairy lights and all of those things. And let us look at how we can develop love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
We ask Allah to make us all amongst those who love Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as we are meant to love Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We ask Allah to develop in us the iman to love Him with the beautiful love that they had, the, that the companions of Rasulullah had for Him. We ask Allah to increase us in our iman. We ask Allah to increase us in ihsan. We ask Allah to increase us in taqwa. We ask Allah to forgive us for all of our sins, the big of them, the small of them, the open of them, the hidden of them, the past of them, the present of them, and the future of them. We ask Allah to alleviate our suffering, and the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Islam, and the suffering of our brothers and sisters in humanity, wherever they are and whatever situation they may be in, and help us to do so by remembering the calamity of the death of Rasulullah wasallam. We ask Allah to make every single one of us shining ambassadors for the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatam wa fi al-akhirati hasanatam wa kina adab al-nar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka ahmad majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka ahmad majid. Inna allaha ya'amuru bil adli wa lisaini wa ta'i fil qurba. Surely Allah commands justice, good deeds, and generosity to relatives. And He forbids all shameful deeds, injustice, and rebellion. He instructs you so that you may be reminded. And remember me, and I will remember you. Be grateful to me, and do not reject faith. Wallahu dhikr Allahi akbar. Wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon. And without doubt, the remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing in life. And Allah knows the deeds that you do. Akeem as-salat.